Everybody, this is Mike Brennan here at the National Hurricane Center with the 5 p.m. update on Tropical Storm Debbie here on Wednesday, August 7th. Uh, Debbie continues to be the major weather factor over much of the southeastern United States, all the way from Florida up through Georgia, the Carolinas, and now beginning to influence the weather up into the mid-Atlantic states and eventually up into the northeast. Uh, Debbie is currently centered about 50 miles to the southeast of Charleston. The center has been meandering around and not moving very much today, but the current motion is off to the north-northeast at about three miles per per hour now, but you can see these sprawling bands of showers and thunderstorms uh, near and uh, near Debbie Center, but also extending to the south and west and also off up to the north and northeast of the center. If we look at the radar imagery this afternoon, you can see there's been a big band that's developed uh, to the west of Debbie Center across portions of southeastern North Carolina and uh, eastern South Carolina with some flash flood warnings in, in effect along and near the I-95 corridor between Columbia and Charleston. The possibility of some life-threatening flash flooding there adding to those already very high rainfall totals we've seen. You can also see some heavy rainfall occurring in extreme southern North Carolina from Wilmington over to the west towards I-95, additional rain bands across much of eastern and northeastern North Carolina, and you can even see some rain bands now spreading up into the tidewater portions of Virginia, some showers and thunderstorms across central Virginia as well. So the big story with Debbie is going to continue to be the rainfall because of that slow motion. We're going to still see a slow motion, again, a little more steadily toward the north overnight tonight and early Thursday that's going to bring the center of Debbie onshore along the South Carolina coast. Then we're expecting a slow northward motion across eastern South Carolina on Thursday and then a, a motion toward the north and northeast that will develop Thursday night and Friday. And finally, Debbie will accelerate to the northeast across the mid-Atlantic states, northern New England, and then over Atlantic Canada by the time we get from Friday night into Saturday morning. But again, the big story is going to be the rainfall, and we're going to touch on that first. First, we'll start in the southeast, in the coastal portions of uh, South Carolina, southeastern North Carolina. We could still see an additional three to nine inches of rain in some locations, with storm total amounts approaching 25 inches in some parts of coastal South Carolina, up to 15 inches in southeastern North Carolina. So that's our biggest concern here in the next 12 to 15 to 18 hours. Uh, then the threat for the heavy rainfall is going to shift westward and northward uh, from the uh, upstate of South Carolina across portions of central North Carolina, western Virginia, where we could see isolated rainfall totals as high as 10 inches uh, focused in places along the Blue Ridge Mountains, the I-81 corridor uh, down along US-220 south of Roanoke towards the Martinsville area. Then as we move up into from Maryland up across Pennsylvania, New York, into Vermont, we could see uh, two to four inches of rain over widespread areas with uh, isolated totals as high as six inches uh, that could cause, again, significant flooding concerns in all of these locations. So let's break it down first. Uh, first, I want to notice that there are flood watches in effect all the way from uh, southeastern Georgia through much of eastern South Carolina, central and eastern North Carolina, much of Virginia, eastern West Virginia, western Maryland, all the way up into central Pennsylvania. Uh, those watches will likely be extended northward and eastward as we go through the next couple of days. So so first, from tonight, from now into Thursday morning, the area of, of greatest concern for the uh, flash flood risk is going to be in areas like Wilmington, uh, Fayetteville, Myrtle Beach, just to the north and east of Charleston, Florence, South Carolina. That's where we have that high risk of excessive rainfall, that level four out of four risk for flooding. Moderate risk, level three out of four, including Charleston, Chiraw, Raleigh area, Kinston, all the way over down to the near the Moorhead City area. As we move from Thursday into Friday, you can see that high risk is extending now from south central and southeastern North Carolina uh, just to the west of the Triangle region, including the Greensboro area, uh, places like Martinsville, Roanoke, Virginia, with the moderate risk extending up through eastern West Virginia, the western portion of Maryland, the Maryland Panhandle, and a slight risk extending up into much of Pennsylvania. As we go from Friday into Saturday, that moderate risk is now going to extend from just to the northwest of the National Capital region, up through central Pennsylvania, places like Binghamton, Syracuse, Albany, Burlington, up in to places in northern New England. So again, those are the areas that you're going to be on the lookout for flash flood watches and warnings to be issued. Make sure you have multiple ways to get weather alerts, uh, including a NOAA weather radio, wireless emergency alerts turned on on your cell phone. Uh, from the wind perspective, we are expecting Debbie to strengthen a little bit more. The maximum sustained winds right now are about 60 miles per hour, could get up as high as 65 miles per hour before the center moves inland along the South Carolina coast later tonight and early on Thursday. We have tropical storm warnings in effect for the South Carolina coast extending inland, including places like Florence, Myrtle Beach, Georgetown, Charleston, inland across extreme southeastern North Carolina, the North Carolina coast and places like
like Wrightsville Beach up to Surf City. Tropical storm watch from Surf City up to Beaufort Inlet. Could see some significant wind impacts in some of these areas, especially because soils are saturated. Could more easily knock trees down, cause some power outages as well. On the coastal flooding front, we don't have any storm surge watches or warnings in effect anymore, but we could see widespread uh, uh, coastal flooding with inundation of one to three feet above ground level from the South Santee River in South Carolina up along the North Carolina coast to the Ocracoke Inlet and, and, uh, and also along the Pamlico and Noose Rivers extending westward in the western reaches of the Pamlico Sound. That kind of flooding, coastal flooding, is only going to exacerbate the flooding we're seeing from the heavy rainfall in those locations. So let's wrap up with the key messages on Debbie on this Wednesday afternoon. First, heavy rainfall, first in the Carolinas, then spreading up through the mid-Atlantic states and the northeast is going to cause considerable flooding impacts from tonight all the way through Saturday morning. Tropical storm conditions will affect portions of the South Carolina and North Carolina coasts tonight and Thursday, where we have those tropical storm warnings in effect and also be out on the lookout for the potential for that coastal flooding as well. So as we wrap up our summary of Debbie here this afternoon, uh, please, uh, again, stay tuned for more updates here at the National Hurricane Center. You can find our products at hurricanes.gov. Find information from your local National Weather Service office at weather.gov. And we'll be back with more on Debbie throughout the next couple of days. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center.